Welcome to the Mahadeya. Today's the Mahadeya, as you can very well see, is a special program. Now, uh, through today's the Mahadeya, I think uh, we are about to have a very special discussion with a lady, a resource person, a lady who is known to you. But for the viewers who are with us, for the first time or who has not met her before, I would like to introduce her to you. She is none other than Dr. Shiroma Bandara from UK. Uh, she happened to be a dentist but had an early retirement in life for the very fact of practicing Dhamma. So I think that's a very special reason and we are very fortunate to have her today to our Dhamma discussion. Ma'am, we warmly welcome you to Dhamma Hadha. And uh, first of all, I would like to, you know, uh, there's something I have observed, ma'am. Now, recently, uh, when I went to, recently we had the Poson Poya Day, and when I went to the temple, or probably I would say Bellangvila or some other temple, you know, the temple was crowded. And there are lots of people, you know, doing Bodhi Puja and there wasn't even a lamp to be lit. There were no vacant wicks to be lit. And uh, the, you know, incense sticks, they were full of incense sticks and, uh, you know, you couldn't find a place to stick another. And even the flowers, full of flowers. So, when you see such a lot of people at temples, you tend to be happy. But then again, if you consider things happening in the country, it doesn't look as if people are practicing Dhamma. But why do you think, ma'am, why, I mean, so many come to temples and there are so many who are concerned about at least coming and, you know, offering flowers and worshipping to the Buddha at least on a Poya day. But why? Yes, I agree with you. It's beautiful, isn't it, to see on a Poya day. Very. It's like a basket of flowers, mm. white flowers. Um, it's full of uh, people clad in white and uh, mm. their faces so beautiful, serene. And it's actually beautiful to watch that. And I, I, we have to be grateful that it happens, at least at that level. Okay. So in fact, it yeah. actually, it is a good opportunity for us to talk about it and why um, uh, people put so much effort and time, as you said, uh, for the Dhamma practice. And um, I also have noticed that uh, uh, majority, like 30, 40 percent, even more than that, uh, they are in one place and just swirling about where they are and there is not much <coughs> progress from there. Yeah. So um, I would like to uh, share my experiences Please, in the past yes. and uh, I myself made a lot of mistakes and uh, mm -hmm. fell out of the groove because the path we all know. Mm -hmm. But the wise thing Buddha said, Buddha's teachings is for the wise yeah. and why because we need to actually fall into the groove mm -hmm. it's like uh, if you play a record and if if the needle is just out of the groove you don't get the music as it should come out yeah. so if it is right on the groove you get the beautiful music so mm -hmm. buddha's teachings is just like that and uh, unfortunately if you don't have a good kalyanamita or a dhamma teacher or a guide or collection of kalyanamitas around you mm -hmm. you can easily fall out of the groove mm -hmm. or you swirl around and around in the same place just like the broken record mm -hmm. so uh, we can use this opportunity to go through the path from the beginning very beginning and iron out some of these problems that crop up and hopefully all these beautiful people out there our whole nation is full of this Buddhist Dhamma, even other religions who are so <laughs> serene and who are in moral conduct to be able to progress from there. So that is where it is. This progress should be there mm -hmm. so that we see the um, <coughs> advancement in this life itself. Mm -hmm. so well, ma'am, uh, now about this progress, if you think, if you happen to see that there is no progress, do you think there is something wrong in the way that they practice? Um, quite true, quite possibly. Quite mm -hmm. possibly. It's not because of uh, their fault. It's just because of simple unknowing. It's because we practice without the right understanding. 
and uh, the right, um, the wisdom and knowing what it should be. So, uh, well, we'll start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, if I may start to say, um, we, if I ask a lot of these people who we find in the temples out there, why do you practice Buddhist meditation or Buddha's teachings? Why do you follow Buddha's teachings? And what would be the answer? I'm sure most will say, I'm born to a Buddhist family and my <coughs> parents did it and I'm expected to do it, but I should do it so that I'm a good person. And so many maybe, answers. Uh, maybe uh, that uh, some, some also say that they would like to be born in a Devaloka. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so and have more wealth in the next Bhava. Yes. So that is part of it. Then again, with due respect, um, we, I went to Sweden recently mm -hmm. for a Dhamma discussion and I um, asked a lot of people, Swedish people who are very affluent mm -hmm. people in a very affluent country, about 50, 60 of yeah. them came to meditate. Okay. And uh, tea time, I asked them, why are you following mm -hmm. Buddhist teachings? And it's <coughs> everywhere in London and even here, there's a majority of people who would say, uh, two major answers I got. One was to say that uh, we want to find the truth and the why I'm here, where am I going, where did I come from, what is the purpose of this life. So that is a very good uh, answer. And the next one was, uh, it's full of suffering this life and I want to find cessation of suffering or peace and inner happiness. So we can work on those two. And there were some who wanted to both, mm -hmm. had both those reasons why they <coughs> follow mm -hmm. Dhamma. So here we get some good uh, explanations and uh, uh, good reasons for following the Dhamma and I, I would urge everyone to just look inside even though whether you are very deep Vipassana yogis, just look inside to see why am I doing this, why am I spending so much time, what, what is the purpose, what is the hunger there and then touch it and then find is, is this Dhamma catering for that. Mm -hmm. So if we take these major two reasons I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. Dhamma Chakra Pratana Sutta, mm -hmm. Buddha's first discourse comes to my mind. Okay. It's one of my favorite um, sutras and I thought uh, to come out after realizing such a profound Dhamma, to come out and say to his five friends who meditated with him, so convincingly, what would he have thought of saying? So that with one discourse, he convinces these people that here is the truth. Because there yeah. would be skeptical mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. oh, Gautama mm -hmm. went there and now he's <coughs> eating and he's having comfort. Here he yeah. comes. So he had to say this profound Dhamma. Yeah. And uh, when you really read Dhamma Chakapatra Sutra over and over again, there's such depth that comes out. And it's it's the core of Buddhism. Absolutely. The whole core, whole of, it core is there. of it is in Dhamma Chakapatra Sutra. Sutra. And in fact, the answer <laughs> to both of these questions. Because at the beginning of the sutta, he says about the um, uh, way the two uh, two uh, extremes mm -hmm. of the path, the after kilometrani yoga mortification. So when he says both self sensual <laughs> indulgence, mm -hmm. he says gammo hino putu janako. Anario, anatta sanghito. It's not what the wise recommend, mm -hmm. and it's pointless. Anatta sanghito and the self mortification again. Dukkho, anario, anatta sanghito. Mm -hmm. So then he says, well, these two extremes are that. Then there is this third path, which some people think is the middle path because it's the middle of those two. Not necessarily so. It's because it's not the atta kilamatani yoga. Here's the path. It's not. Uh, Kama Sukalyanu Yogya, here is a path which is called the mud, middle path. And uh, that he describes <coughs> as uh, uh, Jnana Karani, Chakku Karani, Jnana Karani, Upasamaya, Abhisambodaya, Nibbanaya, Samvatati. Mm -hmm. So Jnana Karani, Chakku Karani, the wisdom, the insight is here in this Dhamma. Mm -hmm. So for those people who are seeking that, here it is in the middle path.
and then towards the middle of the sutra he says i will talk about the four truths mm -hmm. and he says about the dukkha arya satcha mm -hmm. and then samudaya arya mm -hmm. satcha and uh, nirodha arya satcha mm -hmm. maggo arya satcha and the mag again comes to be the middle path mm -hmm. here so if you are in so suffering so the path leading towards nibbana the yes. middle path cessation if we say cessation of suffering and here finding the truth the absolute truth uh, the way it is and here he says cessation of suffering yes there is suffering so here we are the answer to both questions majority 100% of people would fall into that category seeking the truth or mm -hmm. uh, cessation of suffering so the sutra here we boil down to the middle path here the middle mm -hmm. path and that is mm -hmm. where we have to get uh, the middle path fall into it right on the groove as i say yeah. yes if you deviate again you can think oh well i'm going to Uh, have cessation of suffering by doing so much good karma and go to sugati worlds and deva realms so you just missed a uh, track there so keeping yourself in the path is so important mm -hmm. and then again i find when you uh, look at the path also look inside and question what is the purpose of this path what is the goal mm -hmm. and the sense of the goal sense of the path sense of the purpose in mahanama sutra buddha uh, uh, teaches mahanama about mm -hmm. having a sense of where you are going it's not grabbing the goal mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't misunderstand that as if the goal is there and you're here the goal is right here your dukkha is right here cessation is right here so the purpose the goal and the path is right here have a sense of it like how you if you want to go to anuradhapura mm -hmm. you have a sense that i'm going to anuradhapura you yeah. have a sense why you're going there sure. you have a sense the path if you just come out of the car into the road without a sense of di direction you don't go anywhere in fact mm -hmm. so most i find who are swirling in the place don't have that sense of the goal so they would go and do the pujas the mal puja pahan puja bodhi puja khatina over and over again but where is the sense of purpose in it sense of the goal they missed it so they keep doing the same thing over and over again and think i mean the buddhist path so here we find no progress there mm -hmm. one reason So mm -hmm. just look inside and see <coughs> the sense of it the path and whether you are actually um going in the path towards your goal mm -hmm. which is again all here and now. Yeah. I think um, you're in danger if you are deviating from the path just by hoping and wishing for sensory uh, you know sensual pleasures. Yes. you know hoping and wishing for being born in sugati being born in heaven or being born wealthy if that is your intention yes we're not saying it's bad but you are missing something and you are you are still in danger exactly in sansara most people get tempted to do that because it gives temporary transient even though transient mm -hmm. some temporary uh, relief release yeah, and happiness because i find that uh, there is that fear and uh, lack of um, confidence that uh, i can go to a ultimate truth mm -hmm. not be happy with these small happinesses mm -hmm. i will sacrifice the small happiness mm -hmm. and go to a the bigger happiness yeah. so then we come to another where after we've known the sense of the path to have determination Yeah. and confidence yeah. confidence sakko mm -hmm. i can do it and okay. i will do it and if anyone has done it i can do it that confidence sure. and then a determination that we are we i'm going to allocate time effort uh, whatever that it takes 
to do it. So this is so important. Some of you might think this is so simple, but if you miss these points, that is where the progress is not there, and you start swirling in the same place. So uh, just like a medical student mm -hmm. entering a medical college, mm -hmm. look what a lot of effort they put. They don't eat, they don't sleep, and uh, the time that is allocated to it, knowing the goal in five years' time, six years' time, they become doctors. Yeah. So that's how you have to do, put all your effort, determination, and the sense that I can do it. Start the path, even now, here and now, as you're listening to this program, make it yeah. start. And if you, you have 10 years ahead or 15 years ahead, you can do it. As Buddha said, you only need seven years, seven days to do mm -hmm. it in the Satipatthana Sutra. Okay. So it's not too late, you, whatever your age, mm -hmm. just get, get the sense into it, determination that I will do it this birth itself and I will not settle to go to a Deva realm or Sugatigami or instant happiness here and now, which I would say put as not so, it's a, like an inferior kind of happiness. Yeah, because they are not permanent. They won't make you happy forever. Exactly. So yeah. there you are, so the determination. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, before we start uh, the path, uh, the middle path, which goes as Sila, Samadhi, Pragna, let's look at another little pitfall that comes, I have seen in many, is mm -hmm. uh, your lifestyle. Okay. And uh, we talked about that last time as well, when mm -hmm. you're very busy, become stressful, and uh, so many duties and mm -hmm. responsibilities to yeah. the... And of course, we have to acknowledge that. So, there is, I came across this uh, beautiful sutra, again, Badraka Sutra mm -hmm. in, um, uh, I think it's in Sangita Nikaya. Mm -hmm. Buddha so compassionately says about five points he highlights there for the normal Gihi people uh, to address, to have a look, to change your environment, to be aware of the environment you're in and now you have a determination this birth itself you are you have saddam kalyanamita so you are going to develop your mind and um, have some insight into life um, i will just look around me my environment and lifestyle so here he highlights these five points and the first one is uh, basa ramata mm -hmm. just see <coughs> how much you talk I, do you talk unnecessarily, cut down on your talk, yeah. chatting? Because chatting will lead, you will even break your precepts that way and unnecessary waste of time. So here you are. And if you have already cut down talking, just see, can I cut it down even more? Mm -hmm. Even more, even more. You can, until you have noble silence most through the day. Mm -hmm. So cut down your talking, basaramata. Second one is Nidda Ramata, cut down on your sleeping. Mm -hmm. Just have enough sleep, adequate, and maybe get up an hour or two early and then you can do your meditation. Is uh, another um, reason not to follow this path is I don't have time. Mm. So here you can find time. I think uh, morning is the best time because uh, you're fresh yes. and it's, it's a very good time, time. for meditation. Uh, yeah, and if you have a full... <laughs> Uh, seven hours, six mm -hmm. hours sometimes, or eight hours mm -hmm. if you need, and then get up and just go straight, uh, start your meditation mm -hmm. for an hour or so. So, <laughs> Nidda Ramata. Then he mentions Sangha Ramata. See how much socializing you do. Is that so unnecessary socializing? Cut down on the socializing. Just do what is necessary. And if your presence is needed there, go there. If not, you can say, you can find a better, more productive thing to do, so mm -hmm. socializing. Mm -hmm. And then Ganasanga Ramata, group activities and getting into so many clubs and social gatherings and part, being part of this group, that group, responsibility, duty, just cut, cut it down, cut down. And he recommends in so many places to have a solitary life. Uh, solitude, he talks highly of solitude. Um, ry they s he compares uh, rhinoceros, be like the rhinoceros. Okay. There's a sutra <coughs> called the rhinoceros sutra. Okay. Be like the one horn 
rhinoceros. Okay. And then you must what have about heard him? Yeah. Uh, uh, he is they are so <laughs> independent okay, the rhino. and mm -hmm. happy and content and strong, confident mm -hmm. in pursuing what he has to do. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is the sutra, he um, compares um, be like the lone elephant mm -hmm. in the jungle, be like okay. the majestic lone elephant. Yeah. Solitary life, okay. solitude, mm -hmm. what he talks about. Then the last one he says, uh, prapancha Ramatha, which is getting caught in thought trends. Prapancha mm -hmm. is thought. And uh, we can go on, get lost in thought. So cut down on thought processes. Just become aware, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And what it will do is it will automatically bring you to the present moment and you will fall into the mindfulness, present yeah. moment mindfulness. And believe you me, you will find even better happiness contentment being in the present moment rather than thinking. Thinking brings suffering because thinking takes you to the future mm -hmm. and the past. Mm -hmm. Thinking takes you to untruth. Yeah. And uh, just mm -hmm. being in the present moment, cut down on your thinking. Um, thinking can, I take it like my worst enemy. If I'm thinking, I, I bring back, I don't have a aversion to it, acknowledge I have been thinking, come back to it. But appreciate more being in the present moment. And I so have also heard, ma'am, I do not know whether it's true, I think uh, at a workshop, that if you think, you know, on your about, uh, if you worry too much about your past, your brain cells die. Mm, possibly. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've heard in a yeah. workshop. So I think unnecessary thinking possibly. leads into mm. a lot of trouble. Yes. And uh, on that same when um, I had read um, that when you're in the present moment, mm -hmm. it's the uh, arising starts in the present moment, arising of all phenomena, mm -hmm. according to Buddha's teachings, uh, or arising of all the five aggregates, and arising of each atomic particle. And if you're in the present moment, you're at birth mm -hmm. every time. So all your brain cells open and get energized and you become, you don't die, you do, your cells don't die that quickly, the reverse of what you said mm -hmm. when you're in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So that rings uh, truth, yeah. I guess. Now ma'am, I think um, the viewers, perhaps they just switched on the TV and saw the two of us discussing. Yeah. And there might be uh, someone who thought, just as they switched on to our channel, Oh my goodness, this is going to be very difficult because we have to cut down on our chatting. That's something I enjoy very much. Mm -hmm. Cut down on our sleep mm -hmm. and so on. Yes, and I have to add another one. Please. Cut down on your eating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not I'm too much. I'm sure some, uh, some of you are disappointed. Yeah, but if you try, <coughs> then you will see that cutting that down, you feel physically healthy, mentally sure. alert and then being in the present moment and uh, you will experience a better happiness than what you're experiencing yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And again, I like to mention Buddha's famous words, Ehi Pasiko. Mm -hmm. Don't take Come. it because we two are chatting here about it. <laughs> Ta don't take it because it's in the book, like as he says in the Kalama Sutra. Don't take it because the teachers say it, but do it. Just do it and experience it. And then I will take a bet you will not stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Not stop doing it. Then you feel so um, happy and alert all the time. And physically healthy as well. Mm -hmm. So what more can you ask for? And I think uh, also, ma'am, some of us, when we have a problem, when we, when we are suffering from something, some of us tend to think, okay, the best way to is just get myself involved yeah. in some club yes. or with some friends. Yes. But it is quite the opposite. It is the opposite. Mm -hmm. But because if you uh, get involved in things, we, I think, discussed this in the last program as mm -hmm. well. When dukkha comes, suffering comes, unsatisfactoriness comes, what we do is we go to the fridge, we open the fridge, eat something, ring our best friend, take a magazine or go see a movie go to Anuradhapura, plan a trip to Dambadiva, all this just could be running away from something. But um, and temporary. 
temporary happiness, happiness you get but uh, buddha's teachings on the four noble truths is so mm -hmm. simple so here and now and not a lot of people everyone knows the four noble truths but yeah. who practices it it's so easy just acknowledge that loneliness has come boredom has come some pain there yes yeah, suffering is in me and then just think why why what is my mind asking for what is it craving for what the another situation that it is asking for and then think well i can live without it even when you see the dukkha and the cause it dis dissipates it just gets mm -hmm. neutralized and it dissipates and melts away it happens and then you can let go just let go of that and say i can be here without it i'm happy instantly you feel happiness so you don't have to do anything and this is permanent you keep doing this later on you can address your practical issues of your problem mm -hmm. and get it sorted out that that is different but here and now there is suffering here and now there is a cause that you identify here and now you just let it go just by seeing just by acknowledging mm -hmm. and here and now <coughs> there's release so that yeah. is one way of doing it now do you mean ma'am like that now this is what i understood happiness is right under your nose yes. but you don't realize you don't practice Nibbana is, is right under your nose. Okay. <laughs> But my uh, teacher, Venerable Dhamma Ji, was famous words. Mm -hmm. It's right under your nose. Okay. So the second sutra that comes to my mind mm -hmm. about changing the environment we did and then changing yourself and your mind is the famous Karaniya Metta Sutta. Mm -hmm. Most people think uh, Karaniya Metta Sutta is all about a sutta about myth. Uh -huh. but in fact uh, in the atwas they have they uh, d um, explain that as karaniyang uh, ma atta kusalena uh -huh. atta kusale what kusale you do for yourself and uh, from the beginning to the end of karaniya uh -huh. metta sutra is about uh, uh, development of the mind and towards nibbana uh -huh. the path towards nibbana uh -huh. and here again the first the uh, stanza is about karaniya matta kusalena yantan santan padan abhisamecha to achieve that beautiful serene place here are the 14 qualities to develop mm -hmm. sakko confidence uh, again uh, my teacher says it's like uh, sakko is hakisanya i can do it mm -hmm. hakisanya for any project if you have sakko you'll do it well you'll do excellently mm -hmm. so sako uju cha suju cha be upright and supremely upright in sila samadhi pragna so and so on and so forth murdu um soft humble mm -hmm. and malleable uh, all these 14 qualities you need to develop so uh, we have to try doing that as well when we are in the path because here is another place where we miss the point because we are rushing to do vipassana and our whole character is something else and there is conflict and then after a few months you leave vipassana and then you're sitting there trying to do samadhi and you can't your mind doesn't stay still mm -hmm. so you give up altogether or you mm -hmm. start doing the pujas is the easy thing to do mm -hmm. so here again um think about it sakko uju cha suju cha suwa cha murdu anatimani uh, am i all that i am going to be aware of all these qualities and these 14 qualities will take me will prepare my mind for this journey mm -hmm. very important is more important than chanting it we chant it day and night we chant and ask for deva protection but if you become karaniya matta kusala karaniya matta qualities how beautiful it is you don't even have to chant it you are it you are yeah. it all your cells the mind and body is that mm -hmm. so again in the karaniya uh, sutra you come to metta and uh, we i don't need to say about metta it's most beautiful thing it mm -hmm. makes your mind so soft and moist so it, this this whole journey is about like a farmer uh 
getting a land and preparing it. So we prepare the soil. And mitta is like putting water and making it so moist. And now it's ready for, uh, to, for his crops and it will flourish. Mm -hmm. So here mitta is so very important, mitta for you, for um, <coughs> the mind and body, everyone around you, the town, the city, the world, the universe, seen, unseen beings. And what you find with metta wherever you go, you don't feel, I need to go with my mom, I need to go with my <laughs> brother, because everywhere you go, you meet people and you think, he's like my brother, she's like my sister. And you don't feel anything else. It's a perception in your mind that mm -hmm. you're not my sister. If you have metta, you become sure. my sister. So you feel so comfortable in each other's company. And even if you're an orphan, the world is your family. So metta is so beautiful. So with metta and with this, you have done your preparatory work. Mm -hmm. So I think if I ask everyone, I'm sure all those people who are there in the Dhamma have passed this, but just to have a recheck, yeah. just go back and recheck where am I, what is missing in me, what, where am I, I'm going to practice more metta or be more aware of qualities in my mind mm -hmm. or the environment and get it all nice mm -hmm. and done and have a determination you're going in the path and then we fall into sila samadhi pragna mm -hmm. one more thing before sila buddha mentions for pasaka pasika is dana dana sila bhavana and dana again i don't have to say a word about dana to because sri lankans people love sri lankans love <laughs> yeah dana. sri lankan and dana <laughs> goes together <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, because I remember, ma'am, uh, once when uh, Venerable Ajahn Brahmali visited Sri Lanka, yeah. there was a question from the audience. Uh, she asked, do you really have to meditate to attain Nibbana? Uh -huh. So, like, uh, so don't know, maybe, uh, maybe the viewer or thought that maybe she could practice dana or she could mm. practice sila other mm. than the bhavana mm. she would have probably meant those two yeah could have meant in another way if uh, there are the four types of people you come across that neya people are mm -hmm. those who have to really practice and put mm -hmm. effort padu parama is those who read books and might not have a chance of doing it but mm -hmm. there is i can't remember the pali words uddha Gatika, they have to only hear the Dhamma and they uh, grasp it. So it could be those that she meant, if you have enough power, I mean, mm. that mm. might happen. But again, yes, yes. if you think That's by doing Dhanas uh -huh. or seal, um, we will come back to uh, Ratha Vinita Sutra later. I'll touch on that. That shows how we need to go from one to the other, like the chariot, the relay runner. Uh, one like the baton race, passing the baton from one to the other, we have to shift. Um, again, now coming to Dana, mm. I know we appreciate that very much, but the pitfall here, as if as now we are discussing where mm. we don't make progress, uh, Dana, Dana occurs, don't go beyond that. They're so comfortable, so happy doing the Dana, so content mm -hmm. doing the dana, they won't think of anything else. They uh, uh, put all the effort and time into it. So here, and again, you need to have the right understanding to, of doing dana. Um, as you mentioned before, dana is given to get um, sukha, subha, and pleasurable things, happy life, uh, more material positions. and Long things. life. Yes. So, okay, well, let's leave that mm -hmm. group. There will be second group who will give dana genuinely to get rid of um, loba moha dosha and yeah. get rid of greed and aversion and yeah. um, delusion. Mm -hmm. That is good. And for yourself mm -hmm. and for the person who is receiving it for both, to getting rid of uh, loba moha dosha. And then there is another deeper level. If you have that attitude, uh, giving dana because of total letting go. Mm -hmm. a, an, uh, an intention of letting go, mm -hmm. intention of just uh, because there is a reason, there is a, a reason that 
there need to be a dana given, a dana is given, cause mm -hmm. and effect, and with total letting go. Yeah. And that can become the supreme, the best intention, even non-intention. Mm -hmm. uh, because cause and effect, there is that dana is needed and dana is provided. So without the dana, there is no I gave dana business here, mm -hmm. dana is provided with total letting go. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good way of giving dana for those who give dana. Would and be it's a, a paramita practiced yes. by the Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. So you can keep on doing that, but um, mostly Velama Sutra, that's the one that I was thinking of the other day, uh, Buddha tells um, Anatta Pindika. Now, um, the snap of a finger, asurusanak, if you do anicca bhavana or metta bhavana, it is more superior than giving dana to Buddha and the Sangha and even building temples and all the dana me kusila kama you can do. Anicca bhavana is snap of a finger, it's more powerful. So if you remember that and um, carry progress to the next stages, those who give dana. And from dana, then we go to sila again. All of you might think, say, oh, we know all about it. We know all the sila. But I'm going to ask a question. Uh, we are all in sila, but do we even ever think, is my sila progressing? Am I, have, I, have I got 100% sila? Am I in adi sila? Do you? Now, you take the precepts in the morning. We all do. Get, come out of the shrine room and then you have forgotten all about it. The whole day <laughs> is gone. Yeah. We tell a fib here, a lie there, a white lie, habitual lies. Habitually we just say, oh, I can't come because I have to go somewhere or I'm not very well. Or even a slightest lie. Or we pick up things from here and there and bring home. Uh, even go to the extent of uh, inappropriate behavior for sexual gratification and the word how difficult we how much gossiping and uh, we do and unnecessary yeah. talk so various different ways we may be breaking the precepts so what we do in our classes uh, in London every week when we meet we do as we take the pansil we also do a sila reflection mm -hmm. so we uh, reflect on the sila go back and think, have we kept this uh, seal? Uh, it's something like that we reflect saying um, in the past week or at home, you can do it on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Today, have I hurt anybody, physically hurt or um, tried to kill even the smallest creature, worm or mosquito or even an ant accidentally or yeah. give fear to anyone I'm living with? <coughs> Uh, did I pick up something or take something that uh, wasn't given to me? And then you think very intently, very genuinely, sincerely whether you did that. And then did I behave inappropriately for some reason? What about my word? Did I tell a lie or uh, start waste time gossiping or uh, tell tales and cause problems? Yeah. Uh, harsh words, did I lose my temper? Or did I um, break, um, take anything that is like intoxicating yeah. stuff? So um, then you reflect on the sealer and then if you have done it, genuinely you pick on it and make a determination. No mm -hmm. regret, but genuinely pick on it and make a determination not to do it the second day. So yeah. here there is a progress of catching what we should and shouldn't do, and the sealer progresses to a adi sealer. So it goes on. Um, now, how do we keep the sealer? Now, if we just chant it, it might not work. So, if we kind of um, uh, look at it, we can do with metta. Yeah. If if um, um, someone comes to kill me or harm mm -hmm. me, that will cause suffering in me. So if I go to harm anyone or kill, they, it will cause suffering to them. They don't like suffering, I don't like suffering, why should I do that? 
and even uh, stealing if someone takes my property it will cause suffering to me yeah. and if I uh, go and take other people's property it will cause suffering to them so why should I do something and cause that suffering so with metta you can promise yourself to keep the precepts and then again looking at the consequences are the mm -hmm. if I do this kill or tell lies these are the consequences so I will refrain from that or you can if you are advanced you can meditate you mm -hmm. can think of anicca yeah. uh, what I'm going to steal is mm -hmm. impermanent what the happiness I get from stealing is impermanent mm -hmm. so why should I steal it's anicca or you can think of cause and effect this is the reason why I this is my greed that makes me want to steal so I see the cause and I let go and I'm not going to break the precepts. Yeah. So if you have those reasons why you keep to the precepts and again Indre Sangvara Sila, mm -hmm. uh, restraining your senses. So that as well like that is a bit um, into uh, Vipassana mm -hmm. and uh, say the seeing, uh, the eye, the seeing and the pleasure I get. Uh, from the seeing and the mind that is seeing is anicca. So always having that, hearing the sounds, the pleasant sounds, the ear, yeah. the mind that goes there and the pleasure I get from that is anicca. So restrain in the Sangvara mm -hmm. And also for all this you need to have two hiriyota, like shame and fear of mm -hmm. even breaking these. And with that you can easily uh, keep to the sealers and also make a determination no matter what I will not break the sealer. Kakachu Parma Sutra Buddha said uh, even if my hands and legs are cut off mm -hmm. it's past birth you have heard of yes, that. Yes I remember. Uh, yeah. He will not tell a lie, uh, be patient and not tell lies so that is the determination. Mm -hmm. And then if we think uh, what um, are the rewards of it might help you to be in mm -hmm. sealer. And once um, Ananda asks Buddha, what are the rewards of being in Sila? And he says, there will not be any remorse and fear. And, and what is the benefit of that? You will have joy. What is the benefit of that? You will have tranquility. What is the benefit of that? You will have um, samadhi concentration easily. And what is the benefit of that? You will get knowledge and vision. And what is the benefit of that? You will have liberation and freedom. So here Sila is like the foundation mm -hmm. of all and that has to be very solid even though we don't think about it much. And another pitfall is this, the people who come and take Sila on Posunde get stuck doing that and 63 years they will do seal on a poya day and they don't go forward. Without See, any progress. Yes. Because uh, they do that for one particular day and then come back and forget yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And they and don't Just think, once a month. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is why you don't... See, why am I taking the sealer? Here, the, the one and the main reason Buddha has mentioned is we uh, develop sealer because it's conducive to samadhi. That is the only reason. Mm -hmm. The other rewards, benefits that we get, we have inner happiness, confidence, protection, like the farmer mm -hmm. putting a fence around the crop of land yeah. to protect from wild being. We are protected with seal. Eh? And, uh, we, and we will go to Deva realms, whether we want it or not, it's there. And we have uh, pleasantness, everybody harmony around where we live. Mm -hmm. and, huge amount of benefits but the main one is that it is conducive to Samadhi and um, mm -hmm. uh, before we finish I think I need to mention we Ratha. We have 10 minutes more. Okay. Yeah, we can talk. <laughs> talk. Ratha Vinita Sutra is one of <laughs> my um, favorite uh, sutras. Yeah. Here um, Saryut Maharajatan um sees that there is a new a mm -hmm. monk who has come to town. Mm -hmm. um, his name is Punna Matani Buddha. Uh, Buddha actually praises him a lot. So, mm -hmm. Sari um, uh, Maharatan once he wanted to go and see who this is mm -hmm. and goes and starts this discussion. And here um, he asks about puri purity of your mind, mm -hmm. purification of the mind. 
mm -hmm. uh, is purification of mind done for unbinding mm -hmm. or um, and he says uh, no it's not uh, mm -hmm. venerable monk um, is purity of mind done um, uh, for uh, here and now happiness and he says no it's not and then if it is not what is it why is purity of mind done practice for mm -hmm. so he then uh, he says i will explain with the um, story story and he says um, uh, king pasena di kosala mm -hmm. is traveling from saketa savatti to saketa mm -hmm. and when he travels he takes seven relay chariots okay and he changes the chariots at seven points and he goes into a new chariot a new chariot and then he goes to saket the, the king his friend asks oh uh, king did you travel come here by this chariot mm -hmm. and he says no so uh, then did you b come by another chariot and he says no and he says this is the way i came it was with the seven chariots one leading to the other so this uh, he says about the sapta visuddhi the seven purifications mm -hmm. sila visuddhi chitta visuddhi ditti visuddhi magga magga mm -hmm. vi visuddhi the seven visuddhis one has to be done because it's conducive to the other and also it is because purity of the mind is done for the sake of purity of the mind says mm -hmm. that is it purity of the mind is done for the purity of the mind and it is conducive to development of the mind chitta visuddhi and that is done for that and mm -hmm. then ditti visuddhi mm -hmm. so it has to be done with a purpose uh, because of its conducive so when people uh, observe seal yeah. and they are in seal and we have reflections of seal mm -hmm. so we have a like a stock taking stock control business woman man will know that the business is doing well by just doing that stock counting yeah. so it's like getting that account mm -hmm. accounting seal and then we go and we know it's progressing and we are going to towards adi seal and hopefully end up with the arya khanta seal and uh, that is like um, enlightened beings have this uh, seal mm -hmm. complete yeah. seal seal they have become the seal and they see everything with anicca and hetupala and the mm -hmm. seal is kept mm -hmm. so there you are the whole foundation is intact so those who are in seal now you need to say with this purified mind i will sit and develop my samadhi mm -hmm. and that is where you go forward mm -hmm. after seal and of course when all this happens your shraddha develops and yeah. your from your puja your shraddha develops to more with understanding uh, with akaravati shraddha because you have experience in dhamma and uh, then gradually as you go to samadhi and prajna your uh, rituals will slowly fall away mm -hmm. that will happen automatically yes. because your shraddha is now because of experience and um, you can make a progress from there mm -hmm. so that seal of foundation is absolutely important and that itself is protection mm -hmm. inner happiness and um, it will push you to us the uh, rest of the path definitely <laughs> and ma'am i just happened to think because now we were having a very important um, discussion but there might be people you know people sometimes don't um, you know uh, tend to misunderstand mm -hmm. now there are people i have just come across people who just don't practice anything but criticizes the people <laughs> who go for puja yes. or people who observe seal they might think okay this is it yeah what if you just drop all that but still do nothing and because i uh, if you just drop all these armies of yeah. pujas yes. but still do nothing about it i yes. think that is uh, dangerous Not good yes <laughs> what we acknowledge and respect what yeah. they do so the pitfall is because they are swirling around doing the same thing yeah so 
it is like today I will ask everyone to say where including me, including everyone, uh, just take a stock taking. Here I am, now I am doing samadhi, I, my mind goes to samadhi, I can stay there 45 minutes, one hour in samadhi, right, good, my mind is very strong now, so let's see whether I find there is some kalyanamitra or look for vipassana, how to see anicca and progress, the jump the, from this to the other step. So it is actually from the good to the better, mm -hmm. so what they are doing is good, but yeah. go to the better. Yeah. Not drop, go to the better, good to the better. So, uh, so that's good, but just have that uh, time is going. Shana Sampati is every moment is passing. So, as we come towards death, which is around the corner, <laughs> we need to. And you never know when and where. Exactly. Yes. Are we prepared for that death? So, uh, it might be to too see. late. Mm. We can, they can, people can actually keep doing the rituals mm -hmm. because the even dropping of that should happen like with cause and effect. It has to come from within, not because someone told you to do it. That's not right. It has to come from within. When the time comes and you are getting more inner happiness from samadhi and vipassana and having more time doing that, yeah. these will automatically drop. So wait till then, it will happen and um, look inside and see where you are now. Get the purpose and the goal and a determination, sakko, mm -hmm. be sakko and uh, no one can stop you. So no one can definitely stop you if you have the will, if you have the determination to follow the path, uh, path explained by the Buddha towards Nibbana. So thank you very much, ma'am. I think it's indeed, we are, we are indeed fortunate to have you because uh, very uh, <coughs> rarely do you come to uh, uh, your motherland and, you know, just explain and uh, disseminate your, uh, the Dhamma and share your knowledge with us. May this Kusala Kamma somehow contribute to you in uh, towards achieving the goal of Nibbana. Thank you, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. <laughs> and uh, folks, please uh, do write to us if you have any comments, you know our address. Uh, you know the uh, address of uh, the program uh, Dham Mahadeya, you can say the producer Dham Mahadeya, the Buddhist channel, Sri Sambodhi Vihara, Gregory's Road. Columbus 7. You can ask questions, you can send comments or suggestions for improvement, which I call constructive criticism is also welcome. So uh, let us meet the next week with yet another fruitful program. Thank you and may the most noble triple gem bless you. Mm -hmm.